Witches Collaboration Podcast presents Take Note Tuesday. Note Tuesday. Oh, I'm Tuesday. sorry, you don't have a lot of time? No problem. Each week, we'll pick a topic and drop some knowledge in a short, concise mini episode. Take Note Tuesday is a production of the Coaches Collaboration Podcast, hosted by Cole Warren of Salutum Health and Performance, Josh Pearson of The Complete Athlete, produced by Brooke Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to start up. Let's go! And I'll start it because I have yet to do a meet. Yeah, dude, you're an imposter. Mm hmm. Sure. Now that I'm saving for a wedding, you know? Yeah. Right? Dude, a meet is not expensive. Yeah, but I still got to get a singlet. And actually, for USAW, I have to get a weightlifting coach. And the only coaches that'll come with me, because I don't have any weightlifting coach friends, mm. I have to pay them to be there and for me to be on their roster. Like, they're not being cool, like, oh, yeah, no big deal. We'll just take you. You can't just join a team. I like, don't think so. You can't just show up at a meet by yourself and do a no, meet? No, you have to have a... Well, unless I want to go on the platform, lift, right. run off the platform as fast as I fucking can, get my next lift written down, yeah. and then run back on the platform. I mean, oh, I could do right, it that way. They follow. Yeah. It's not like a, a Exactly. Flight. You could exactly. potentially follow yourself. Exactly. And I right. might only follow myself with two minutes. So to run out there, I can't even set my mind. So you need a coach in the background. And I do believe they have to be USAW certified. Really? Sucks. That's not how it is USAPL. No, it, for USAW, I'm, I swear you have to be a certified coach. Wow. But what's nice is when I got certified as a coach, I met a few people. One's at Granite City CrossFit. I yeah. might be able to convince her, but it would, and, and I would be well, totally Well, and all fine. you would do is give her numbers that you want to, yeah, and exactly. she would just put them in. So Yeah, be, if this happens, we go here. Right, if I miss, right. we, we do this. Yeah, yeah, You'd still be calling the shots, but for you'd sure. be having her at yeah. the table. And it whatever. would be nice because then... It would give her a coach to do a competition too. Right, so right. I just have to poke around. But yeah, technically, I, I haven't competed either. And I'm crossing my fingers September. So I get married in August. September will be my first meet because yeah. I'll finally have money. Yeah, man. Well, that's one thing. We're, we're, we're going to go over here. I have talked to a couple people recently who like reach out and they're like, hey, Cole, when do I, when should I do a meet? Or what meets do you recommend? Or, what do you recommend I get my numbers to before yeah. I do a meet, right? Because, mm -hmm. and this is especially for men, right? Like men always want to get to a certain benchmark yeah. before they do a meet. I work with a guy who that was his opinion yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. And he, so when someone comes to me and says that, I'm like, first of all, fuck whatever your numbers are right, right now. Like just sign up for a meet and do a meet. Right. Because for one... Every single number you hit out of me is going to be a PR because you've never done a competition right. before. So they're all going to be meet PRs. P yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And they then, might not be personal PRs, but still. Right, right. And then also the experience you gain from doing a meet is going to mm. be way more beneficial than you pushing that off until you hit certain numbers right. anyway. Because what happens, and you can ask anybody, especially I have a lot of lifters that are still relatively new to powerlifting. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once they do their first meet, dude, they are hooked mm. so then they do that first meet and then now they know what to expect mm. going into now they know what they're training for you know what i mean so yeah, they, yeah, they do have, better than last time exactly yeah. so for for people who are wondering when to do a meet or when's the best time like now right. just sign up for a meet and do it and i would recommend finding someone who has either experience in powerlifting meets um, maybe you're going to sign up with a couple of friends who are doing the same meet and have done meets before that way. When you go in, you're not like by yourself and right. have no idea what's going on. You'll have people around you that can kind of help you out, mm -hmm. let you know how stuff works. Um, cause it can be intimidating for sure. Walking into a meet for the first time, you have all these big burly guys and mm. you know, these people moving heavy weights and you're like, uh, I don't know really what to do. Yeah. So Either if you have a handler or sign up with a bunch of friends who have done it before. But like I said, man, just do it. Right. You're you're going to get way more out of just doing a meet than not doing it. Because mm. you, 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 honestly, you're never, your numbers are never going to be high enough. No, never. You know? <clears throat> like you're always going to, oh, 20 more pounds. Right. Because people are like, well, I want, you know, I want to squat 405 at right. least before I do a meet. It's like, okay, well, then once you get to 405, it's like, well, shit. Maybe now I'm looking at the numbers and people in my weight class, and they're doing 500. Mm -hmm. So I want to do 500 before yeah. I actually do it. Yeah, your first competition, you don't have to go and win. No, You don't no. have to set a world record in your first competition. Your first competition, your goal should be to go to nine for nine or six for six. Go nine for nine or six for six. And then also just learning mm -hmm. 
meeting people yep. and having a good time. Mm-hmm. Because, man, I tell you what, there's no experience quite like your first powerlifting meet because I swear, like, people want to help you so much because everybody knows how, what it's like to be that newbie. Right. So when people learn that it's your first meet, like, they're going to be bend over backwards to help you out. Like, mm. they'll give you equipment. Like, if you don't have any wraps or something, they'll be freaking people. Right. Dude, 20 here. people will be throwing wraps yeah. at you. So just the environment of a powerlifting meet, one, it's super helpful. Two, people being so nice is going to make you love it even more. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just you just got to do it, man. F your comfort zone. Well, and also, if you're thinking about specific numbers, you know, let's say you hit a 500-pound deadlift, a 450 squat, and right. a three-whatever bench. In your competition, you might not hit all of those numbers, mm-hmm. you know, because most likely the numbers you've hit in the gym are on separate days. You've never done exactly. all three on the same day. You've never done the taper. Yep. You've, you know, you've never cut water, done the peak, you know, any of that stuff. So you don't even know your numbers for real. Right, right. So you yeah. just got to go find them. You just you know? got to go find it and go start start obtaining that experience of what a meet is like. Right. Because there's nothing quite, you can't really replicate a meat environment in the gym at all. Right. I mean, there's, and that's the only way you can really experience that is actually doing a meat. Yeah. The amount of stress I got to believe is crazy. Oh, dude. Mm-hmm. But it's in a good way, you know, good stress which is why it can become addictive. Yeah. And that's also why you need someone there with you to kind of mellow you out yeah. a little bit because they're like before those first squats, dude, mm. shitting bricks. Oh bad. man. Mm-hmm. There's no, like, honestly, there's no better feeling than nailing that first squat. Mm. Be like, you just like, like, yeah. Boom, we're in the Or meet can now. you imagine missing that first? Oh, no. Like for me, I think snatch because uh, that's our first. Yeah. If I miss that first snatch, fuck. Because now you're behind, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to bomb yeah. out. Right. Yeah, that that's freaky. And then you start overthinking. Because oh, then you, f- first thing right away is like, shit, 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 I missed. Shit, shit, yeah. I missed. I've hit this 100 I was supposed times, to. Bitch. That was supposed to be my easy weight. Right. I fucking missed that. Are you mm-hmm. serious? Have you ever missed your first squat? No, but in my last meet, I missed my first deadlift. Ooh. So can, it, was it a technical error or it just was bolted to the floor? No, it was, uh, I guess you could say it was a technical error. I uh, lost balance at the top. So mm. it actually went up way quicker than I thought it was Pulled going you to. your toes. And then, no, I actually fell, had to take a step backwards. Were you sumoing or traditional? Sumo. Okay. So I, it came up so fast. Mm. And then when I leaned back to lock out, I lost balance and had to take a step back. <laughs> and they said no. Yep. And then... Because at that point, you're like, okay, I already did. I got through squat and bench. Literally, all we need to do is hit this first deadlift, and then you're- You have a total. You have a total, period. Mm-hmm. Did and you hit the same weight the second rep no, or go up? I went up. Yeah. Just because- It went so easy. Right. The reason I missed it is because it moved faster than I would have mm. thought it was going to. Yeah. So in most of the time, if you miss a lift, I like 95% of the time, I recommend people to retake that weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for just sure. this, it depends on the situation, obviously. Mm. But for me, like, it literally moved so good that right. I missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we just stuck to the plan and went right. where I was going to on the next one, and it, and it went fine. But there's no, like, that was that was scary for a second there. How often do people blow their load on their squats? It happens quite a bit, man. Yeah. People... Because they want that PR squat, they feel great, and then it fucks them. Right. Well, and and that's what, it's tough with new lifters because... They are so, um, they're so focused on hitting PRs mm-hmm. that they a lot of times can leave potential weight on the platform. Ah. You know what I mean? So let's say you hit your second attempt at, let's say, 370. Yep. And your PR is 405 and you want to go 410 so you can hit that PR. But that 370 was like, it moved like, eh, like, okay. Right. So instead, you should probably go like 400, 395 ish. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But People just like, hey, I, I need to hit a PR. PR. So they go for 410, miss it, and now they're stuck with that three whatever. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now they're- And they that's, just wasted all that height, 40, that energy. Yeah, that, that's 40 yeah. pounds that they could have potentially had on their total that they right. didn't. If they would have just went a little bit more conservative mm-hmm. and went a little bit lighter, yeah, maybe it's not a PR, but it's going to help your total in the long run. Yeah, especially like you said, your first meet, no matter what, if you place a total, that's a PR. Exactly. Yeah, just yeah, get yeah. not Just make those lifts. Mm-hmm. So what do you recommend- First time person as a percentage on their squat to start. So kind of a RPE? benchmark. No, well, it's hard to guess RPE. I right. would say on that. So day. as a benchmark, your opener for all three lifts 
should be something that you could hit on your worst possible day. Mm. Like you're sick with the flu. Right. Someone comes, wakes you up at two in the morning, brings you to the gym, and you yeah. can still hit that So like uh, between 88 and 92%, yep. somewhere yep. in there? I'd okay. say a benchmark that I use is like 90%. Yeah, Something yeah, yeah. you could hit for a triple on a good day. Right. And then from there, then your attempts are going to vary on how those move. But right, yeah, yeah. That way, you've if it's something that's like around 90 for 90%, you've hit that weight before. Mm -hmm. You know what Many I mean? Many times. Yeah, 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 you've touched it. You know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. So that way you already have that little bit of confidence going in. So then it's just routine from there. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're going to be nervous as fuck, man. First I remember me, my yeah, first yeah. ever squat in a competition. I don't even like, well, I shouldn't say I remember it because I you don't. you black out. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Because I went up there and like, I remember unracking it. And then I remember my legs feeling like numb. Oh, I'm like, wow. oh, okay, this might not go good. <laughs> right. And I ended up hitting it fine, of course, because it was light enough. 90%, yeah. Right. And then after that, then I was like, okay, you know, I'm in the meat. So my nerves right. dropped off and I got more focus. But yeah. Those... Yeah, because I guess you have so many eyes on you and, yeah. you know. Like, I mean, especially never done a meet before. Right. How many times do you lift in front of 50 plus people? Never. And then out of five meet, people, I'm ready to kill everybody. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got all these people literally staring right at you. Right. And at and, local and meets, a lot it of tends people, to be quiet. I hope he misses. I hope he misses. What yeah. the fuck? I hope he doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah. And at local meets, it tends to be quiet too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like all these people silently Weightlifting is staring a at you. Silent sport. Right. So you're getting, you're doing your whole setup, and mm -hmm. you're just like trying not to focus on all these people looking mm -hmm. at you. Yeah. I know with so, weightlifting, so so each lift happens every two minutes. There's a lift. Right. right. And the weights either stay the same, the next lifter comes, or the next weight. But every two minutes, unless there's some error, mm -hmm. every two minutes somebody's taking right. an attempt. Right. After the first 30 seconds, there's a buzzer. And then after 90 seconds has elapsed, there's another buzzer saying, you have 30 seconds to get that bar off the platform. Mm -hmm. Just the buzzing, I need to start replicating yeah. and simulating because that's something I don't do. Just like recently, I've been going no music. Or just beats yep. where there's no, no it's just so super mellow. Yep. It is the hardest shit to do. Isn't it? But when I, I'm so reliant on music that it's just mellow and I'm like, what the fuck? I can't even hit this. Yeah. You know? But then also, dude, at a meet, like you're going to be so hyped just oh, to yeah. be there. Mm -hmm. Like you don't even need, like I get, if I'm at a meet, I could literally get hyped off of Taylor Swift. That's how freaking jacked oh, yeah. I am all the time. There you go. But. Yeah, so just overall, if you're thinking about doing a meet, just do it. Just go out, experience it, Try be very conservative in your attempt selection, go nine for nine, meet people, network, um, just have a good time. It's yeah. not, especially if you're first meet, I mean, it's not like you're going for a national championship. Or oh, anything. for sure. Right, you right. know, Get out there, set some benchmarks, um, learn as much as you can, ask a ton of questions about with from other lifters that are there that are more experienced watch mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing is watch watch how people do things there because watch the most the the most experienced people and just how they carry themselves mm -hmm. and how they time everything and just be a sponge man yeah. just learn one quick question yeah. singlet mm. how do you decide on the right singlet <clears throat> so for powerlifting we're going to touch on this in another podcast, but gear is is kind of complicated as mm -hmm. far as USAPL goes mm -hmm. because they have an approved list. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking at doing a meet, that's one thing that you're going to have to look at is look at the approved list. Um, and as far as local meets, they're regularly pretty flexible as long as they meet the parameters as far as dimensions and stuff like that. They'll yeah. pretty much let you use it. But if you plan on going and doing bigger meets, then you'll want to buy, invest in the equipment that's already approved. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've used um, a slingshot singlet okay. and an SPD singlet. Okay. And the SPD singlet's super comfortable. Okay. Like, that's what I recommend to people is mm -hmm. an SPD singlet. I think they're, I mean, singlets are kind of freaking spendy, man. Like, yeah, they're, they're like, 100 bucks or more. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the SPD singlet's around 70 or $80. Oh, wow. dollars. Some of the weightlifting ones. Um, I've looked into like virus and XX2 and dude, virus it, stuff is spendy. It's very spendy. It yeah. looks fucking sick. It though. does, right? <laughs> but it, it's because they there's some antimicrobial shit. Yeah, and come moisture on. wicking. Right. Yeah. yeah. But Adds then ten kilos to right, your total. Then works on comes out with a twenty dollar singlet. It's probably just thin and right. Look yeah, at all so, my pubes. 
<laughs> yes, that's right. I'm gonna totally wear yellow. See-through. Maybe that's what I'll do. Just bright yellow. Don't right on my pale skin. Just go out there. Dude, that would look hideous. Oh, that's the point. I want people looking red right hair, at my butt yellow. crack. Oh my god. Oh, I want them. That's to see another that swampy so, ass for people. All that sweat. So I would recommend getting a black singlet mm, yeah. because if you get a colored singlet, it can be less flattering on certain areas of your oh, body. Yeah. Like a blue singlet, like people are seeing that bulge for days oh, just because it's blue. It, it, it is then. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't blue want to is. show off your I want bulge, them seeing I would bush. recommend uh, going with a black or yeah, yeah. A very dark colored singlet just <laughs> So yellow and bit. orange isn't the way to go? No, no, I don't think so. But it makes me look curvy. But yeah, so that's what we would recommend mm. as people who are thinking about getting into powerlifting or weightlifting, man. Just pick a date, pick, look at the local whatever federation you want to do, find a meet, sign up for it, and just do it, man. You're going you're gonna to get way more experience. You're going to learn way more by doing a meet regardless of where your numbers are at it's screw waiting to do a meet you're mm. never going to be strong enough because right, every yeah. time you get strong you're going to want to get stronger right so just sign up do a meet and enjoy it and watch and learn yeah techno tuesday will drop every tuesday obviously what do you mean you haven't subscribed yet what the hell are you waiting for take no tuesday is a production of the coaches collaboration podcast this week on the coaches collaboration podcast we talk about choosing group training and how an instructor can make or break your experience there are good instructors and there are bad instructors so how do you go about finding the good we talk about nutrition specifically breakfast and we get totally nostalgic about some of our meals from the past cookie crisp <laughs> And Fruit Loops and Buttered Toast. He's so obsessed with them. Yeah. God, it's so good. Next episode drops Thursday.